Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech Game. My name is RJ, and um, I'm currently flying in um, P3D version four, and it's been a um, bit of an ambition of mine for a while just to uh, create some models uh, and just plonk them down. So you can see at the moment um, I'm flying over the uh, the smallish village that I live in, and there's a church there that's a, uh, a default sort of church, but I've also and this has taken me best part of a week to get my head around this so I thought I'm gonna make a video to help you guys out figure out how this is done because I've been racking my brains and I managed to get probably everything wrong so there's some little bungalows down there courtesy of me that school there yep that's me and it's pretty damn rubbish but uh, I am so happy with it and there we go there's my house so now you know where i live you can always uh, pop around for a uh, for a brew and talk about um simming so there we go so uh not the best looking models in the world but hey they flipping work and trust me i almost gave up several times so there we go now you can go around and glorious, gloriously um produce models yourself so right let's just pause this and come out of it so there's been quite a few videos on the internet about bits and pieces but there didn't seem to be anything joining the entire process up and went through all the pitfalls the guy who developed um the program that i'm going to bring up here now which everyone seems to be working this model converter x i mean an absolute champion but his videos i'm sorry to say mate um they suck a little bit it's not a native english speaker to be fair to him though to be honest he speaks better english than uh, i can speak um is he from the Netherlands or that? Yeah, sorry. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to try and go through this in more layman's terms because I'm definitely a layman and uh, that guy is more of a programmer. So um, I found out about this program, downloaded it and thought, yep, yeah, that looks brilliant. It's going to be easy peasy. Um, first of all, um, how are you going to create it? So he goes through on uh, downloading um, the Google SketchUp so we'll go through that go through downloading this and installing it because there are a few little um, key things that you need to put in I'm sure if you sat for hours and read through every single line of text about how to do the install you probably would you know you'd ace it but I kind of went in blase yeah sure download it click 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 and off we go um got part way down and it just didn't seem to be working and i thought that it was just i don't know i don't know anyway let's just let's just get on with it um this is going to be a fairly long-winded video so just bear with me but i'm going to try and go from start to finish to make sure that we don't miss anything so first of all you're going to go to this website and you can download uh, this model converter X now there are lots of other bits and pieces that you need so you need an the SDKs um, if you don't know what an SDK is then you need to go on to the prepared or the FSX um, and you can get it free from prepared their SDK um, so just Google P3D SDK download it get all the files uh, from them um, there are some other bits and pieces that you need those well, and you've got to go hunting around the internet high and low Unfortunately, there's not some kind soul that's managed to put all these programs together Just stuck it in a file and said here, you know, it's all there I suppose there's probably the SDK kits. There's probably some copyright issue with them. I don't know P3D seem to put them out for free. So um, Anyway, so download Converter X and let's go to no, we're not going to go to there here we go so I've dropped it in my program files and there you go so you can see my um, the SDK um, so there's my prepared version for SDK so that's the one you download off off um, uh, P3D website and you install that and I created a folder in there you can stick it wherever you want I had it in my download directory for ages but you just unzip this uh, model converter um, and drop it in there and then just create a, a link to it on your desktop or something. Now, there are lots of other tools, um, which I haven't really tend used much yet, but I, in my franticness of trying to get things to work, I just seem to download all the tools. Um, you can just drop them all into the same directory, I believe, because lots of them sort of cross talk to each other anyway. Um, but this is model converter X is um, the thing we're looking for. 
And if we just open it up, this is the thing that you've got to get working. Um, make sure you get the latest version um, and watch the tutorial about um, how all these little icons work. Um, and the biggest pitfall, I'm going to go through this now actually, just because this is the first thing you want to do. Get this thing up and running. Um, go into options and first of all, you've got to set this thing up and tell it where everything is. So um, the main things are the... Uh, the importer that's all in the software itself the exporter now this is where you've got to put all the um the where all the files reside that don't come with this these are all the the p3d or the fsx files so you've got a bgl comp exe so you've got to go and find that now they're all in these sdks um so you've got to find that for uh, bgl comp there we go, Lockheed Martin, old SDK. I think there was some issue with version 4. I think they're just about updating that now. So is that there? Find that file, the SHP2VEC EXE. Um, and you can Google these and find out where you know where they are. And some people have uploaded them on the internet. Um, this FSX2 MDL path, um, I don't think that was actually needed. Um, make MDL path. Uh, yes, so just make sure you got all those. Find those. So just do a file search in the SD in the SDK directory to find those, and make sure they're they're up and running. So I did all that. That was that was fairly self-explanatory. It's like look for the file. What's it asking for? So you kind of click on it, um, and it and it tells you down here what it is that you want. So yeah, so that was all fine. The thing that tripped me up and the thing that got me running around in circles for a couple of days. Now, you go into this. So there's another uh, thing here, FS related settings. Now, I think it asks you when you first load this up what preferred version you're using. So um, I clicked on there, version 3, although this is version 4, it doesn't seem to make any difference. But I think there was an issue, I think I saw on the forum there's an issue that he's, he's going to update version 4 anyway. So pick version 3. Um, or unless you're on FSX, put in the right path um, where your version three, or version four is. Yeah, but this one here, this is it. This model def path. If this isn't here, everything will work, and it will export textures, but it won't export a BGL file. So when you go to do the conversion of your model, that you got to find that model def dot XML. So, and in there I found it in um, the old SDK modeling. So, you've got to look for that. If that's not on there, it's not going to work. So, that was the revelation where I'll get it working after a few days. So, it's this. There's, there's not just one um, set, um, settings path that you've got to find. So, you've got to do the exporter settings and the FS. Okay. So, there you go. So, hopefully, with that all set up, you're good to go. Okay. Right. So we've got that. Go to um, go to uh, SketchUp. Okay. So what I'm going to do. So this is free. Um, you don't need the pro version. You can just use the standard version. I don't know. I'm not sure what's on the pro version. Um, and just click down here. Start SketchUp. Okay. Now, there are quite a few videos on YouTube that you can watch about how to use this. So I recommend just going through at least just the basic one to begin with. Um, and even I'm just still getting it. I'm, I used Studio Max at work and I've used CAD for years. So quite versed with that. But this acts and works just a little bit differently. So you, it's best just to spend 10, 15 minutes and watch the video. So to create a basic house, um, there's a few different ways you can just do, um, you can create a box. Now I was used to clicking and dragging and then letting go, but this is click, let go, and then um, move it. And down here on the right, you can start typing the dimensions. So if you know roughly the house that you're gonna do, um, he says, oh, I think I see you type in. So if you say you're gonna do a house that's, um, let's have a look at what we're gonna do. We're gonna do, um a small modern detached so that's probably i don't know 
what's the width of a detached house going to be? Um, that's one, two, three, four, five, five meters wide. They're pretty narrow, aren't they? Five by, I don't know, say five, five by eight meters. Okay, so just get an approximation of the size. So let's go um, five, comma eight. Oop, no, I didn't do that. Five, comma eight. Return. And it's made a tiny little square box there. And make sure this point here is at the edge of your house or wherever the house is going to be, where you want the insertion point is going to be on the house. Um, and then you use the pull, pull, the push, pull thing. And it will tell you on the distance there on the right what the height's going to be. So um, about two and a half meters per floor. So two floors, five meters ish, something, roughly. For our, there we go. We've got a box. Right, um, what was the shape? So it was a single. Now I'm not going to make all this complicated because I think keeping this for your um, for your simulator as basic looking as possible. And when you're, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred feet up anyway, you're not going to see these sort of chamfered roofs and all the rest of it. So we're just going to use that on the texture. So I'm just going to do a flat face there. I might do this pitch here anyway. So the pitch is going from left to right that way. So I don't know, I might do that from bit there. Let's see. Um, so it was, oh God, I've forgotten already. Scatterbrain today. No, not there. Where are we looking? So the pitch is going right. And it was the widest at the front. Okay, so. We we'll draw a line from the midpoint, so it'll snap to the midpoint there for you. And click there. Right, now we've done that, we can use the move and just get that. And move it up. There we go. Job's good. Now that's a very, very basic house. And that's kind of mainly all you really want when you're flying around. Um, obviously, if you're at an airport or somewhere where you're going to get close up to it, you can start going really crazy. Um, but we're going to keep this nice and simple just to uh, to make it quick, quick, easy and uh, just a quick, dirty model. Um, as I say, my modeling skills in FSX are not brilliant yet, but I just wanted to run through this whole process with you just so um, you can see how to do it. Now, something that I think is just recently being added, if you go into File, Geolocation, Add Location, which is really quite cool. We can put in the location of where now this so where i got these images from just uh, sorry to back up again where i got those images from is i just um just went google street view um and just went down the road and had a look at a couple of uh, houses and they were down here so we might as well use this as the reference point of where we're going to model this today so you roughly put on where you are in the world so let's move that down so you can see it um you can search wherever you are in the world, type in address and the rest of it and it has to select a region and then you click grab and you do that and that's now hang on, it's doing it in the background I've just got a spinny hourglass waiting for it to load up in SketchUp and it's nice because it kind of gives you a bit of a refer reference point on on the ground of where it's going to be and believe that it puts those coordinates onto your model for you so when you import it in it should have those coordinates in although i haven't really kind of got to grips totally with that yet so it's a little bit low res but it kind of gives you an idea so we can see where that insertion point was was just there um so when you uh when you pick that reference point so the house was there uh, do, 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 do. so we can just spin this house around I suppose so that m makes it important when you pick that location so it's, um, it's clear location do that again add location so it means when you pick that center crosshairs there you want to make sure it's at the corner of the house of where you want it inserted or the midpoint or wherever you're going to have it inserted and that then is going to be, give you that perfect coordinates that when you drop it in, it depends how you're going to do this. I, I, I'm thinking that I would like to create all these models and not have them located so that I've got a library of them 
and then just drop them in um, in another in another fashion um, not individually putting the coordinates in I've been doing things through sim director which seems a nice quite easy way although a little bit uh, fiddly um, on copying and pasting just objects and moving them around or ideally I think probably creating these to create autogens but that's a bit above me at the moment creating autogens anyway back to this so we can see here now that the orientation we can move that around and rotate the whole thing around that point there yeah is that right yeah so it's something like that there we go which is about there really okay so now we've got a house right so we've got our pictures and we even need to make some uh, materials so over here in materials you can pick all these standard ones that they've got in there so for um, bricks and things like that you can just um, double click on there or click up here the paint paint bucket thing and you can just click on the whole thing if it's all highlighted or just click on no hang on you can just click on a single face if I change that now there you go so you can just change the faces but it all looks a bit samey generic all the rest of it and you'd have to start putting windows in all the rest of it so I've just taken photographs of those so if you click on that little icon there with the plus sign and call this um, house front I don't know whatever and open right I've dumped all this into my desktop um, just to easily find it and here we have do, 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 modern little modern detached house so if we click on that we create that as a texture and you give it an initial size of, uh, what did we say it was 5 meters wide, something like that. I don't know, by 5 meters high. Ah, no, it keeps, uh, keeps the scale in. Right, okay, that. Do the same again for the other, the other sides. So I've got a side there. You don't really need to name these, to be honest, because they're going to be renamed anyway. Um, I don't know, let's call it, yeah, let's call it side anyway. Because it'll have a renaming system later on when we do this. Uh, so that was there. And a rear. There's some other rear. Now that, I just... Did a Google image search for detached rears and stuff. Um, another good place, I suppose, to find images of houses is going on um, um, real estate agents. You know, getting, getting images. Um, there could be some somebody who might get upset that you've taken pictures of their house. I'm sure they really won't mind if it's a tiny little image of their house. They might find it quite cool that they're. The picture of the house is in there. Um, if you take a photograph of things from a public place in the UK, anyway, um, you're within your rights to be able to use it as long as it's not commercial. It's in a public space. So, right. So we've got these materials in here now, and that was the front. There's the front of the house. Dump that on there. That was the side of the house. I'm going to dump that on there. Zoom around. That's the side. The rear was that one there and that I can use the texture just on the roof there from the front one let's see in a minute so this is just all going to get stretched around in a minute so I've just dumped all the relevant ones in there for the front the side and the back of the house so as I said this is pretty uh, quick and dirty this is not going to be amazing but Depends on the complexity of, uh, of what you're doing. So with the bucket still um, applied, right click, go to texture and position. Now this takes a little bit of getting used to. You've got the position button here and you can see ghosted in the background there our house. So you want to move the, uh, the one corner down and across there. 
Now these, um, as I say, this is something you get used to with SketchUp. That rotates, but it also stretches as well, like increases the size. If you drag it up and down, it rotates, but if you drag it to the side, it increases. So we want that house front um, to be there. So it just lines up with that side of the house and that side of the house. Now this one here stretches it up that way. So we want that to go up to there now. And then we can mess around with the perspective on this one. Just to bring it up. And hey, if we leave a little bit of that there, it looks like it's... Um, Let's just move that one up a bit more. No, we want to make sure the window stays on there. But that's going to make it look like this. Hang on. So if we click away from it now, you'll see roughly what it's going to look like. Ah, door's not so good. Let's just double do that then. That needs to come in a bit, doesn't it? Just so we've got the door on there. We're going to have that missing. Hey, as I said. This is no masterpiece. No, I'm not not ha happy with that. Okay, I'm not gonna make it that bad. <laughs> ah, it's because I had to stretch it back up again. Here we go. All right, so it's not ideal, but you get the idea. So the more effort you put into getting these textures in the first place, the better job you're gonna get. So, and same again. So I'm trying to do this as quick as I can. Let's move that down to there, stretch that across to there, and just man, this, this is pretty much just going to be a brick fill, isn't it? But it's got a window in it as well, I suppose. Makes it a bit something like perspective, I suppose, is a bit rubbish on that. Come on, I did say I wasn't going to mess around with it. I did say I was going to make this quick, didn't I? <laughs> It's going to be one long video if I'm not careful. Come on. So there we go. You got a side, you got a front, top there, texture, position. Now I'm going to use that bit of roof and just stretch this out until there's enough roof there. That it fills. That's going to be a hell of a stretch. It's all a hell of a stretch. Uh, yeah. Is that going to. That's not so bad then. Come on. Let's get it somewhere close. It's still a hell of a stretch. I could just use the, um, if you hold down the shift key as well, you've got another option on these as well to stretch these around the perspective a little bit on it. Yeah, there we go. That's better. As I say it takes a bit of getting used to just the whole material thing, how it, how it all moves around and works and stretches and whatever. But that's, that's okay. Yeah. Go away. That's all right. Hey, come on. No. <laughs> uh, as I say, you could just do that, but oh, I don't know. It doesn't look that great. It's a bit too repetitive. Um, you need a much. You need a um, a whole wall um, texture. You could probably you could go on stock websites if you want to and um, get some from there. But that's only if you got the dosh for it. And this is all being done for free. And you're watching this video for free. <laughs> Apart from your time. And my time to make it. But hey. This was such a revelation to get this all working. I thought I've got to share this and just help people out and do this. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to just pause the video a second. I'm going to do this last bit and then I'll be back in a second. Just to speed it up for you. Yeah, as if by magic it's all done. Right. Okay, there we go. So uh, we got a back. 
we got a couple of sides and we've reused um, some of the same images um, that's a bit crap actually so just be careful when you're picking houses that the door's not over a bit of a chamfer bit there as I could remodel this to put extra bits on but then that's going to slow up your um, that's going to slow up your sim and when you're kind of this far away from it I mean really and how how often are you flying that low so it all comes down to um, how much modeling we're uh, we're really getting into so that's it we're done we're um, we've uh, created a very simple box um, you uh, w watch some more videos on SketchUp if you want to and make it a bit more complex if you want it's pretty um, it's a mind-blowingly easy program to get into actually um, so uh, yeah far easier than using studio max that's for sure that thing took me bloody months to master so there we go right um let's stretch this back down so you can see everything that's going on so we can file save as uh save on my desktop uh editing in the village and i'm gonna i like giving these all their own folders so i'm going to call this um small modern uh, detached hope I've spelled that correctly I'm not looking like a complete dumbass on the internet right um, small modern detach okay so that's saved it as the sketch model and then what you need to do is do file export 3d model and you're going to export it to this dae this uh col colada colada i don't know whatever you call it there's all these others obj's and things which i think I think you can use possibly i don't know but anyway i was watching the uh, the video the guy who developed the software and he said export it to this so i am going to copy what he says because if he made it he knows the best way about these things and i want to put it onto my desktop again and it's in in there and we called it small modern detached in way there and export dun, 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 dun. right we're done with that we can close that we don't need that anymore don't need any of these images anymore either we can get rid of that we can get rid of that i'm gonna go over on about the few oh uh, just another little side note as well um cracking program that i found if you don't have um uh, photoshop then uh this one i found because it opens up the dds um pictures which photoshop does in a standard uh, and it means you can have a look at some of the um, the pictures that um, we're going to create in a minute. So um, go on there, paint.net, free, um, and it's really good. It's, it works quite well. Um, okay, let's close that down. Let's close that down. And we've got a blank screen. Oh, we've got a blank screen. Um, right, where are we going to next? File converter. So if I open up file converter, file converter, model converter X right so we're not going to import you're just going to go straight to wizard convert and place object and I'm sure there's many other ways of doing this but this is just the way that I've got it finally working so I'm sticking with it so straight from this and then I think this is the quickest way as well so this has already opened up I believe not small bungalow small modern detached and there's that DAE and that when we exported it created um, another folder with those images in, but you can't see them because I'm in. So I opened that. Why is this so big? I'm recording this in a fairly high resolution, by the way, as well, because other people have been put these tutorials up on the internet at ridiculously low resolutions, and you can't see what the hell they're clicking on half the time. So I've got a 4K monitor, but I'm doing this at 1440p. <laughs> For your entertainment okay so there we go it's imported it in brilliant there's nothing gone all funky and wrong not sure whether that should not be in there to make it more efficient i don't know who cares right so um input i've just uh, selected it 
the output is going to go to my I'm just doing it to my desktop so on my desktop if I move this over you can see over there it's created a scenery and texture move that back again so it just when it exports this model it automatically wherever you tell this to export to so desktop or you know p3d file or something it will automatically create a scenery and texture folder in there if there's not in there now already now here's another thing this is a little thing that will trip you up as well and if you don't know this this is goes back to the old days of dos file formats and things um, you must make sure that your files have dots or dashes in between no spaces it won't work otherwise so that there the output name that needs to have underscores or dots and dashes on there so if you look at all the files or your scenery files and things like that you'll find that they've all got underscores or dashes in there um, so that was another little thing that tripped me up and got me sort of tearing my well, I haven't got any hair but if I had it I'd be tearing it out um, that's uh, yeah so I put some spaces in there and uh, it didn't work so make sure you've got dash that's dash dashes dashes and dots in there whatever um make sure that you've got those underlines or minus signs in there hyphens okay so we got that we got that if we look down here we've got loads of um errors and things come up that you got to check so first thing you do is if you go into this here this little why is it not coming up with a little helps click on this that's oh, because I was on somewhere else so you got this name here so that's the name of what it's called and that is what it's going to be called as well in the library but you can edit that and you can small call it what you want basically so if we call it that I'm not sure whether it needs to be that, but I'm paranoid now about making sure that everything's got... Ah, yeah, sorry. No, close. No, don't, don't. I need... Set new. Yeah, that does it itself, doesn't it? I'm paranoid now about this being having dots and dashes on. It probably doesn't need it. Dash, dash, yeah, why is it saying it's not valid, close, let's just double check that, yeah it's got that now anyway, and it gives you the information like the draw calls and how many triangles, so you can see this is a very low, I mean something with only 16 triangles that's about as basic as you can get really for a building, um, I believe anything under 500 is pretty good so this is going to be super quick but which is great because it means that you're going to be able to put thousands of these things down and make yourself a nice little village or town whatever um okay so that's that we object placement we're going to do that over here anyway so go into this material editor this is important that you've got to do this and this shows you all the files that SketchUp exported f so kindly for you. And you can see there, if we look at the textures, right, and it shows you all the textures that it's brought in. And you've got to resize these, resize these as well to the power of two, so it's a square, basically. And you can click on that and do it. But if you go to the draw calls first, I thought it would have been better if they would put this in order, actually. Of like a process to run through you can choose the texture size i think by default it starts off at 512 when you first open up the program you can increase these so these are like the 4k textures that everybody talks about in prepared or whatever so you can change that if you click on predict draw calls come on come on come on come on come on it'll say oh no it won't that's a first, never done that before. Oh no, it's come up now. There we go. Um, before, so textures, so there are seven textures, and if we hit this like optimize button, it's gonna resize and kind of move all the images around to, to patchwork them onto um, one image. So it'll be four draw calls rather than seven, so that makes it faster for the, um, you know, sort of less processor intensive. 
um, or you can increase that to four. So we click on that and see what that does. So it's going to create a much bigger file size. So you're going to have bigger files on um, on your hard drive. And I'm not sure whether that's going to cause any memory issues as well. People would depends on the size of graphics cards you got. Um, don't know. Do a bit of research on it. But most textures now you see, um, like the Orbex guy seems to be using these big textures, and they're just putting a load of stuff all onto one uh, big texture. So it's less draw calls. So that's only two. Um, let's stick with that for this thing because it's only a tiny little house anyway. But you need to mess around with that um, and optimize it. So you click on there, and it basically will change the amount. So we go back to now to the textures. Now we've only got four. So you see what I mean? That almost should have been in the other way around. It should have come in with properties and then be draw calls. So it's a little bit. But hey, you know, um, if the developer guy's watching, just move that tab over, dude, because that just makes it a bit more progressive. So like, I do my draw calls, check it, um, check the optimization. Although I'm not really sure that what that is at the moment. I've never really messed with it. Go back to go back to the textures now. So make sure that these are all resized to the power of two. So that one I don't think is, or is it? Yes, now it's now two five six by two five six. So that's all okay. And these have got to be um, as standard and just leave them as DDS. And then click on save textures. And these will all change from JPEGs and bitmaps to DDS files. And that was that program that I said that you can open up DDS files and look at them. So uh, use that. Right, okay, so we're all done with that. We close that down. If you went to close that down before saving that, it will say, do you sure you want to close that down? And you say no. Getting that done. Right, we've still got an error down here saying um, attachment points have not been corrected for the curve, uh, for physics curved earth. So, um, if you go to the, where is it? Oh, it's here. This curved earth. Uh, it's all right. All these dialog boxes are off, off to the side because that's where they are. So now you can put in the position of where this house is and apply the correction for it. So, go on to show map and it defaults to open street maps, um, which their server doesn't work now. With this, so you've got to go to Bing Map. Google Maps doesn't work either, I don't think, does it? Google Map. Oh, yeah, Google Map works. And it also defaults to, I'm not sure if this is the developer where he lives. <laughs> uh, I need to find out how to change the default on that because it's driving me nuts having to scroll from here every single time to the place where I'm doing this. So, where are we? We're going down to. Do, 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 do. What? Yeah, down here. There we go. And it was along this row here. Yeah. It's down here. It was that house there, I think. Pretty much. Approximately. It doesn't really matter for this. This isn't the placement, anyway. This is just to set it so it's. I know, part of the right curvature there. Apply round earth correction and geometry and animations. Yeah, correct. And it's done it. So it's got the career. So we close that down now. Close that map down. Still got the attachment points. I don't know. I can't seem to get rid of that. If anybody can put in the comments below what that is. Doesn't seem to have. Yeah, it still seems to work. Uh, right, so da, 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 show on map. Back here again, down to Bing Maps is the one I've been using. That's a little bit bigger. It will default to a really small window. I think it kind of remember the window size. So Bing Maps, so we go to there, and then once you're pretty close in, go to the satellite view. Uh, find the house that we, or where we want it put. If you remember when we picked that corner, we picked the corner of the house there. Let's put that there. And if you see on here on the right, is it? That should have. 
Okay, that's showing up on there. Aha! There's the house. Don't know why it didn't show up. So it shows you the box, so it shows you the size of the house, and then you can change this heading. Um, 350. I always seem to have these back to backwards. And you can mess around with the heading on there, just get it pretty much lined up where it's going. Because this is this is actually going to drop in um, on this BGR. As I said, yeah, you could get this so it drops onto the North Pole and then just um, position them in SimDirector afterwards. Um, but if you're gonna make, if you are gonna position one of these to begin with as a BGL, make sure it's in the right place because it's gonna be welded in there um, and not movable afterwards. So prefix texture names. So that means it's gonna prefix the textures with um, the name of that. So there's n pretty much no chance that you're gonna have a texture called the same thing if it's all in. If you've got one big massive folder with all your scenery texture in. If you're doing lots of different models, they're not going to have models with conflicting texture names. So you can just click on that. Minimize the amount of textures. We've already done that. Overwrite textures when existing, so don't need to do that. And then hit convert. And this for me was when I was suddenly getting a load of error messages down here, um, which is where I went back to that options on the FS related settings. If you get in that, just make sure that model depth path is right. Um, so if I go into my scenery folder now, we've now got a file called small modern detached BGL. There we go, only 6K, tiny little thing. And making sure that it's got these dashes and dots on the underside. So we're done. That is it. I think I've gone through absolutely everything. I don't think I've missed everything, anything out. You just need to make sure that where you've created that scenery um, uh, folder is uh, loaded into um, uh, prepared, which is not responding now. So let me just load it prepared for you. Just wait a second. Okay, so we're back. And all loaded up, just saved the loading time there for you. And let's see if I know what I'm talking about. See if this actually worked. Come on. Show me that you're there. Don't make me look a complete arse on the internet. I see it! I see it! <laughs> it's only small, but we're getting in there. So... It's kind of just a bit forward now. I'm going to try and put the wingtip on it. See how small these things are actually. But there we go. Not quite lined up, so I could go back and just change that. But there we go, and you see that just down there, that tiny little model. That's what we just created. See what I'm saying about worrying about those textures? Are you really that bothered now? How close are you, can we get in without making everyone Ralph? Hey! So there it is! There is a model placed in P3D, FSX, whatever you're using. And glorious it is. <laughs> so, um, hopefully, I haven't missed anything out. If um, something's not working, then just post it on the comments. If I did miss anything glaring out and somebody posts it on the comments, I will redo the video because I wanted to try and make a, um, a video from start to finish of um, of finding the program, talking about the installation um, of getting the files um, and the uh, you know sort of getting it all running and actually creating one from start to finish and putting it into P3D for you. So there you go. It's been the longest video I've ever made. So uh, please like it. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up if you uh, if you're interested in any more of my videos. Then subscribe. Um, my name is RJ, this is the Tech Cave. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm just going to keep circling around this beautiful little model that we've uh, that we've created. And hopefully you'll have them all over your, um, your sim when you've done this as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.